Hey guys, welcome to the new video in this Neural Networks and Deep Learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about a training set, a validation set, and a test set. And we're going to talk about like what is a training set and why should why should we need uh, a validation set and how can we how can we actually like get these different kind of uh, training and, and testing and validation sets because they're very essential when we're training neural networks to both have some data that we can train a neural network on and then we can validate and, and see like how our neural networks perform performs doing training on a validation set that it hasn't seen before. And then at the end, we have a test set where we're actually like testing the neural network that we have trained uh, with data as well that, that it hasn't seen before. So first of all here, let's have a short recap of, of what we talked about in the last video. So in the last video, we talked about loss and loss functions and like what a loss function is and what it's used for. So if you don't know like some of these things here or they're not really clear to you, like you can go back and, and watch the previous uh, video and these will make much more uh, sense and also when we're going in and actually like training our neural network like how how the neural networks train we talked about that in the last video so make sure to check that out before uh, we go into this video and the next video where we're actually going to uh, to train the neural network that we're going to create in in python with carers so we also talked about some different types of loss functions in neural networks and some some optimization like how does how is an, a neural network optimized uh, doing training and what it is and what it's used for and we have some different kind of optimizers in neural networks uh, that has some different kind of purposes but they all like they kind of like all uh, take like initial uh, or like a starting point in the gradient descent as we can see over here to the right where we have some like initial weight and then when we're training uh, we're using like the gradient and also the loss from the loss function to actually like update our weight for each training and then we have a learning rate um, which we also talked about in last videos uh, that affects the neural network while training so it is, it is the step size that we're taking uh, while we're training the neural network so the essential thing here is to find the, 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 the global minimum point or like the, the, um, the optimum like the global cost minimum here um, for the weight when we're training our neural network uh, by using the loss functions and optimizers. So I'll jump into this video here where we're going to talk about the data sets for neural networks and like how we can create our own data sets and where we can get data sets from and also like the different types of data sets that we need to train our neural networks and also validate it and test our neural network. So when we're talking about data sets we can both have uh, numerical data for example if we have some some different kind of things that we're going to do some regression on uh, stuff like that which is just numerical data that we pass to our neural network and then we'll get an, a numerical output um, as well but we can also have some other different kind of like image data sets for neural networks where we can have uh, different images of, of a lot of different kind of objects that we maybe want our, our neural networks to to be able to classify and then we have three different sets um, when we're talking about neural networks and deep learning. So we have our, our training set and also just in machine learning and artificial in, uh, intelligence in general. So we have the training set here, which is the actual like training data um, that we give to our neural network when it's training. And then we will have a validation set that gets passed to the neural network while it's training as well. So when we have trained neural network, then we will then we'll like try or we want to like validate um, our model, like how good it performs during training. And then we use the validation set, which is data that the neural network hasn't trained on and it hasn't seen before. So we want to see like if, for example, our neural network is overfitting or underfitting and just validating how good the performance is of our model. So the training set is just pure for training. The neural network validation is for validating the neural network. And then we can have a test set, which is actually like images that the neural network hasn't trained on or, or seen, before, it's seen before. So it's kind of like the validation set. But we have this test set here to just like test the predictions of our of our uh, neural network that we have created and trained. So on the right here, we can see some different kind of examples of some for, uh, some images that could be in a data set. For example, if we want to do some different kind of classification problems, if we want to like for example detect airplanes, automobiles, birds, cats, like we will have multiple uh, images of different types of, of airplanes and birds and cats in our data set. So this is only like a sample or like a batch of our of our data sets and we're going to talk more about that here in this video here and how many uh, like how, how many images you really need in your data set uh, to be able to have your neural network try to like classify and predict the actual like classes you want it to. So we have data sets for different uh, types of learning here in uh, deep learning so the things we're going to mostly focus on in this tutorial here is supervised learning where we have where we have all our data that is labeled and then we'll create a, a supervised model. So this is a neural network that just gets passed data into it and then it knows uh, what that data is because we have labeled the data. 
So it, they will now train and do some different kind of classification depending on what type of input or like what type of cl class we gave it to uh, to the network. But we can also have some, for example, like semi-supervised learning where some of the data is labeled and also uh, unlabeled. And then we also have unsupervised learning where all of the data is unlabeled and we could train our neural networks to do some different kind of like to recognize patterns in the data that we gave to it. So we don't know anything about our data. We just want to find patterns in our data and we could use supervised learning for that and neural networks where we're mostly going to focus on supervised learning and we can also have semi supervised learning where we have some of the data labeled and some of the data not labeled and then we can train a neural network to do classification on the labeled, on the labeled data. And then we can actually like use that neural network to, to, to label the, the other data that is now unlabeled. So we'll convert from a, like a semi supervised learning uh, or like semi supervised learning training data set to a supervised or like a labeled, a fully labeled data set. So why is a validation set necessary? We already like went over a bit here, but I want to go more in depth because it's really uh, important that we have this validation set here for our neural network. So as we're already talking about, the, the validation set is to validate that the model can predict on unseen data. Um, so we'll use this, like this data hasn't been seen during training, so we haven't trained on, on the data here. And it makes it possible to see if the model is overfitting or underfitting, and we're going to cover underfitting uh, and overfitting more um, in another video, but just shortly, it is just like if the model can generalize or if the model cannot predict on data that it hasn't seen before or like some other different kind of types of data that it hasn't exactly seen before. So that will be like, for example, overfitting. So it only can predict on data that it already has seen. And so we can use validation to that to like try to, um, to, to like validate if our model can actually like predict what we want it to. And in current, we can use a proportion of the training data as validation data, and we can see that, and we're going to see that when we're going to train the neural network in the next video. So over here to the right, I have an example here of the fit function that, that we're going to use for training our model uh, with the carriers. So right here, we have a parameter that said like validation split. So if you just gave them like, for example, um, 100 data points um, as our training set, then we can actually like split some of that portion into a validation split. Like we can, for example, take 10 or 20% of the training data and use that as validation. And then they will, it will just take that data out from the training set and the neural network won't see that during training. And then it will use that data uh, that it has split into the validation set. It will use that to you to, to validate the model uh, during training to see how it performs. And it's used to tell if the model performs good or if it needs optimization and tuning of some, some different kind of parameters or if underfitting and overfitting occurs in neural network. So how can you create your own data set? So it's really, it's kind of like really hard in time computing to create your own data set. Uh, but we can have like some, for example, some uh, random numerical data and we'll have an example at the end of the video here where we're going to, to create some random numerical data uh, that we're going to actually like train our neural network on and then do predictions later on in the next video and upcoming videos. So we can also have some numerical data from different kind of sources if we want to do some some pattern recognition or or if we just want to like predict something from the from the data that we that we were given. And we can also like have a data sets of images, but it will require a lot of images uh, for image, image classification problems. So if you, for example, want to detect uh, cats or dogs or cars uh, or any other like class, then we will need a lot of images and even like thousands of images of that uh, of that class to be able to track to like do predictions where our neural networks on that class. So when we're creating our data set, we also need to to label our data if we're using uh, supervised learning. So after we have like gained or like we have uh, uh, got all our images into our data set, we then need to label all of the data. So we have to see, say like to the neural network or like to the training set that this is a car and this is a dog and this is a cat. So we need to label the data before we can actually like do the training in a supervised learning neural network. So it takes a lot of time to create your own data set for larger projects. Uh, if you want to do a lot of different kind of classifications or detection of objects. So you can use like uh, you can find like a way to automate it. So you can you can like take for example like half of it, train the neural network on that data, and then when you get new data in, then use that neural network that you have already trained and you have good results on. Then you can actually like use that to label the rest of the data. But it will give some false positives and stuff like that. But it will it will save you a lot of time to do it in that way, and it's really it's really cool as well. 
So as I just said, like we we can also use something uh, called data augmentation, at, and it should be used when you're doing like for example um, image classification and stuff like that. So data augmentation, we're going to cover that in, in another video as well because it's it's really cool and a nice feature. Because if we only have like one image, we can actually like do data augmentation, like for example flip the image or rotate the image a bit, um, and do some different kind of augmentation on that image. So we actually like get the five or five or something like that a number of, of data points or like uh, of data images from only one image or data point. So that's a really nice cool feature that you can use when you're creating your own data set um, when you're going to train your neural network. So where can you get the data sets because there's a lot of data sets out there and there are also some building data sets with carers and all of the other different kind of frameworks inside of uh, deep learning. So you can actually like just go to Google and search for a data set that you want to like do some for example classification on if you want to detect uh, cancer cells and stuff like that. You can just go Google that. And there's also something called ImageNet, which is uh, one of the uh, one of the largest data sets uh, with images of thousands of different kind of classes, from uh, cats to dogs to fly uh, to airplanes to uh, cars to to all probably like a lot of different different kind of classes and the most used classes um, you could do classification on with a neural network. And there's also like Google Open Images, which is also like just a lot of images that you can use for your data set. And there's also some built-in data sets in carrots that we're actually going to do when we're going to create a new convolutional neural network uh, later on in this tutorial here, where we can have, for example, this MNIST uh, digits classification data set here. So this is one of the previous um, previous uh, photos or images that I showed you uh, early in this slides here, uh, where we have these different kind of digits here, and then we'll have a data set with all of these handwritten digits, and then we can actually like create a neural network and try to predict uh, handwritten uh, digits by using this minus uh, uh, digits classification data set that is already built in to Keras. So we can actually just go in and load that data um, with a function in Keras. And there's also a lot more uh, data sets available um, and also built in data sets. So if you want a specific data set, you can just go Google it or like trying to find a sub, um, like a sub data sets of, for example, ImageNet or Google. Uh, Google Ohm images and just use that uh, there's a lot of free out there and you can also like you can create your own data set if you have a like a really specific task but as we just talked about it will be very time consuming and there's already a lot of images and data sets out there that you can use for just um, for just like educational purposes uh, and stuff like that so we're going to do Google call up here and I'm going to show you like how we can create a random numerical data set as we talked about in the slides so this is just like the code or like the code and then the data set that we're going to use in the next video to actually like train our neural network to do some predictions um, on uh, on data that it hasn't seen before. So in the previous videos, we've, we've already been over like how we can create a sequential model with carriers. So remember to check uh, to check that, those videos out if you don't know how you can create a, a model because we're actually like going to, to use that model and create a new model in the next tutorial and actually like train it. And then in, in the upcoming videos as well, we're going to make predictions with the neural network that we're trained with the data set that we're going to create now. So I'll also show you like how we can compile a model so it's ready for training um, in carriers. But in this video here, we're going to focus on like how we can create our own data set uh, that we can train our neural network on. So this is a, 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 an example here, like our exper uh, experimental uh, example that I'm going to just uh, set up. So it's just a random, uh, random numbers and, and a random data set. So it's just random numerical data that we're going to train on neural network on and then try to make predictions on the data that it has trained on. So this example here is just like a, a vaccine is tested on 5,250 individuals from age 10 uh, to 90. And then the individuals are split into two equal groups um, at, at, at year uh, age 50. So the first group is under 50 years, uh, 50 years old, and the second group is over 50 years uh, old. So, and then 95% in group one had no side effects. So people are like individuals under 50 years old, 95% uh, of them had no side effects. And then um, people over 50 years uh, old had side effects, like 90, 95% of, of people in group two had side effects uh, by using this vaccine here. So first of all, here we're going to um, import NumPy. So we're going to use the NumPy arrays, and we're also going to to import random here because we're going to uh, create some random numbers for this uh, random uh, numerical data set. And then we're going to use this sklearn util here, where, where we can actually like shuffle a NumPy array, so our data will be shuffled, so it's not um, so it's not the same every every time we run our code. 
And then we use the pre-processing here, which is a min-max uh, scaler, so we can actually like scale um, the input, uh, like input in our neural network, and scale our data set. Uh, so we have a number between one and zero because we want that when we're training a neural network. So it makes it easier uh, to use numbers between zero and one, and we're gonna have like this scaled our data or like normalized our data. So first of all, we're going we're going to create this uh, empty uh, training set here and an empty uh, training label. So we're going to actually like do labeling of our, our data because we're using a supervised learning. So we need to label all the data uh, that we can so we can train our neural network and that, and also give the labels to our neural network. So first here we have this for loop here where we're going to like actually like um, do all of the people that has side effects in this group here. So a random a random person here under fifty. Uh, we just have this random int here, so we'll get a random number between ten and fifty. So we'll just get a random age here for a person, and then we're going to to use uh, then we're going to append that to our training set. So we so we append that um, that person with a with a with a random age between ten and fifty, and then we're going to label that with a one because it had a side effect in this case here. And then we're going to have um, a random uh, person over 50 um, where, where, where we use this random int function here. So we get a number between 51 and 90. And then we're going to append that as well to our training set. And then we're going to say that there were no side effects or like they had side effects in this case here in our training set. And then we have a follow up here where we just run through like uh, 2,500 uh, 2500 times. So this is the actual like data that um, which is the 95 percent of the of the um, of the people that had or had no side effects. So in in this case here where we have like people under 50, then we they won't have any side effects in, like 95 percent of the times. Where people over 50 here, um, they will have a side effects. So this one here is a label for having side effects, and this label zero here that we're going to append to the training labels uh, list here is people not having any side effects by getting this vaccine here. So this is, just, this is just like how we can create our, our, our training set here and also like label our training data um, at the same time. So if, if we first import the, the, these different kind of modules here that we're going to use and then run this uh, uh, creation of the training and, and, and training set and the labels, then we can actually go down here and, and convert these lists here to a NumPy array. So we can use this shuffle here from the SK Learn Utils. So we can actually like sh shuffle our training labels and training set, so they will be uh, randomized in the in the NumPy array. So if we run this here, we will have now shuffled our training labels and training set um, as a pair, and then we can print out the training set down here. So we can see that we have 41 here, uh, uh, 59, 62, and so on. So this is just all of the all of the ages for the, the people that that got this vaccine here that we're going to test, and we're going to to train a neural network to try to predict if a person with an age had a side effect or not. And then we're going to use the scaler here, min max scaler. Uh, so our feature range will be uh, between zero and one. So we scale all of these values here to, uh, to, to a value between zero and one. So we normalize our data. And then we can have a scale training set down here where we just fit this transform that, uh, that we created up here. Um, so we get this uh, reshape here, minus one uh, to one. So if I run this cell here, we will now have our scale training set and we can then now print out the scale training set as we as well and we can see that uh, we get these values here between uh, 0 and 1. And we can also like try to print out our, our training labels up here. So if I just print out, print our training, training labels up here and I run the cell again. Then we can see that we get um, these, these, uh, all of these training set values here together with the training labels in pair. So we, this is the actual like training set and the training labels down here with our scaled training set that we're going to pass uh, to our neural networks uh, down here in, the, in these blocks of code here in the next video. So this is the data that we have now created from random numerical data with this uh, trial of this vaccine here on a number of of, uh, of, of people. And then we're going to see like if they had side effects or no side effects by getting this vaccine here. So in the next video, we're going to create a neural network. We're going to pass this data that we're creating this video here to a neural network. Then we're going to see like how the neural network actually like trains and how we can train a neural network uh, with carrots here in the code. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification on the video so you will get a notification uh, when I upload the next video where we're going to train our neural network. So I just really appreciate your support and thank you guys for watching this video. And I'm currently also doing a computer vision tutorial uh, with OpenCV in C++ and an algorithm data structure tutorial in C++ as well. So if you're interested in, in one of those topics, um, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll link to one of them up here and then you can check that out. Or else I'll just see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.